This is an Nexus Special, episode 38, WWDC 2015, on Monday, June 8th, 2015. And now, it's one big blur effect. This episode of the Nexus Special is hosted by Brian Mitchell, Matthew Linder, or Snuffy, and Ryan Rampersad. So there was a uh, pretty big keynote today. There was, yes. Which I didn't see until much later. Uh, you know, I don't think you missed out too much. Uh, you read all the tweets and you watched it in full, so... I did. That's true. I've, I've done worse. It's, I think there's been years where I either didn't watch the keynote or only skipped through different parts, so... Yeah, I remember one time I was... Uh, I had the MacBook Air at the time, so it must have been like the first year I got it. And the week of WWDC... The internet at the house just completely went out, and it was unrecoverable. And I was, Ooh, yeah. I was just, just it was terrible. Well, this year and last year, I worked full time, and so I saw it a little at lunch, and then had to catch up in the evening. Um, this year, I caught up much later than last year, um, due to when I work and how far away I have to drive and whatnot. Um, the two years before that, I was in a car driving to Bemidji each time, so I was only on my iPhone. Mm-hmm. So I only had Twitter or, a, you know, light mobile browsing. And then high school, I think I just looked on my phone in class. That's all you need. Yeah. Yeah, and the years when I wouldn't be able to watch the live stream or watch the keynote, I would shut myself off from all sources and try to not know anything about it. So just I can watch the keynote from start to beginning. Yeah. I did a pretty good job of that this year. I, I watched on Twitter up until iOS. And then I kind of, I was busy and I just shut myself out. And that was good. Uh-huh. Because, so that was nice and surprising. Other than I had like a thousand unread tweets in Tweetbot, and it stopped caching the old ones, and so it, I lost, I, I lost pretty much most of the iOS tweets. But it's all right. Mm-hmm. I see all the big ones retweeted. So you watched the keynote in full. Do you know how long it was in total? Ooh, um, I think it was. It uh, looks like it ended at twelve twenty six p.m. Okay, yeah, I was almost two and a half hours. Okay. Yeah, it, it felt like some years it's felt really long and sort of boring, like towards the end. This year I felt like they had a good pace throughout the whole thing, and, uh, you know, each of the major topics was pretty good. Yeah, I was never bored. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it was pretty entertaining. There are some that just get boring because, they, you know, they do all the demo demos at the end, and that gets really tedious. I don't think they were too demo heavy, especially I figure the, when third parties come in and demo. They're just way less interesting. Yes, like Epic, for example. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was cool, but nothing more than that. Yeah. And they didn't have um, little cars racing around on a mat on stage. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, well, that happened. But we got to see Eddie Q dancing. We did. Yeah. Even if uh-huh. it was just stills, it was still good. And, yeah. No, he danced to some music. Oh, okay. One of the Apple Music demos. Oh, right, yeah. Human yeah. music. Well, should we go through this in a more organized manner? Yes, uh, I, I think we have some organization, so let's use it. Cool. So let's start with OS X. Yes. Um, so they're building off of Yosemite's uh, start, I guess, in kind of the same fashion as Leopard and Snow Leopard and Lion and Mountain Lion, where the, the first one is a more huge push on features and some redesign, and then... The next one is more refining performance, um, and so they're calling this one El Capitan, which is another peak in Yosemite National Park. So it makes sense, not as much to the average Joe, but... It is sort of a strange name. Yeah, I didn't know what it was, but I looked it up, and it was like the name of that big rock or peak. And a- Another one of those that yeah. has a flat face and looks good in sunsets. So as soon as somebody gets me the wallpaper, I can start uh, plastering it over all my devices. Oh, I could probably get it to you in like uh, 18 minutes. Oh, that sounds great. So what are some of the uh, major features in the new El Capitan? Oh my gosh, that's such a weird name. Well, um, I think one of the more first things they demoed was the jiggle mouse to make it easier to find, which I think is super gimmicky, but also I might use that. I know with three... Three monitors that I have here during the summer, I have definitely lost my mouse. Maybe because the Bluetooth hasn't connected, but oh, also right. maybe because it's really large and I miss it in a corner somewhere. Mm-hmm. So zooming mouse might nice might be pretty nice. 
I could see myself playing with it a lot when I bore, even when I don't need to find the mouse. Definitely, yes. You know, it's can like, you just imagine how they were just sitting around somewhere and somebody was just like, where's the mouse? And then, then they thought, you know, we're going to make a feature for that. Yeah. Well, it, it's kind of the the gesture has been done because Windows 8 or 7, I don't know when they started it. If you grab a window and shake it, it makes all the other ones minimize. Yeah, it's a dumb. Right. It's a, the worst feature in the entire operating system. I don't, yeah, I, I wouldn't ever use it. And it's only been an accidental trigger, but it's... It reminds me a little bit, at least. I guess it's somewhat similar. So, um, let's see what we have next. Um, uh, full screen some, split view. Yeah, window management and um, uh, what, mission control redesigns. So, mission control looks a little, little more slim, more Yosemite like the blur. Mm-hmm. Um, but inside there, they have you can drag a window t- to make it a new full screen one, even if it wasn't previously full screen. And then you can also do cool window management where you have two apps side by side with a variable adjuster between the two. And it looks like it takes the apps in their full screen mode and just um, shrinks adjusts them. The yeah, the, yeah. the width. So I don't use full screen mode in my computer. Mm-hmm. I, I like having the menu bar. Yep. I don't need the dock, but I like the menu bar for a constant timer. I use iStat menus all the time. Just little updates like that. I And like... I guess from full screen, I don't need to see what app I'm in, but I do look at that a lot. And so I think, and even the doc for notifications, if they come back from something, I'll see I have a new tweet or something like that. So I think it's a good thing in practice, and I might find some cases, especially if I can, you know, only have one window showing, you know, um, messages on one half and iTunes on the other. That might be useful for apps that I don't need to be actively using a lot, especially with multiple displays. Mm-hmm. So... I don't think I'll use it on my MacBook very much, but I might on my desktop when I can have a menu bar, at least on a different display. Yeah, I think it was kind of a... I mean, I'm sure a lot of people use full screen, but I'm not one of them, so... Yeah, I probably I do know some people who just have, like, 10 different apps open, and I think that's really cool, because they're using a feature I don't, and I'm, I'm me, I'm an app fan, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely use uh, full screen apps quite a bit, so for me, this window management stuff is look, looking really cool to me. And uh, almost, if, if the app does support full screen and it's not, like, weird, I will almost always use it. So okay. do, for each full screen app you use, do you use, like, a lot at once? Yeah, I'll probably maybe have, like, most of the time have, like, five to six full screen apps open at a time. Mm-hmm. Uh, often some that are just, like, never closed, you know, like Safari, Mail, Messages, they're just always open, always right. in full screen. Yep, that makes sense. Hmm. I should try that when I go abroad this fall with just my MacBook. I think if I push myself especially with the new features i might really i think i might do full screen on my mac because it, it makes sense yeah and especially. it's really easy to wipe because mm-hmm. uh, i'm just used to command tabbing super quickly or just clicking yeah so uh siri has some updates uh and uh or not siri uh spotlight i mean some natural language processing you can type in a question and you can get an answer yes um it's Kind of, I think, feeding off of some of the Google Now things where they've done more real-time. I don't know. I haven't used Google Now too much, but it seems to be going down the same kind of line. Mm -hmm. Uh, Spotlight is now windowed, kind of. You can click and drag it around. Yeah, they made a funny joke. Well, like, you can drag it around, and then Craig Federico is like, innovation, right? Or something. Yeah, yeah, he did make that joke. Craig Craig is the best. Yeah. I think, let's see. I don't know if I saw, if I'm... Saving tweets. I should go look at mine and make sure I'm not missing anything I saw. Um, but yeah, Siri, or Spotlight looks good. I don't use Spotlight too much because it isn't quite like a Google search. If I could just type in Spotlight and have it do a, a full web search, I might use it a lot more for something like that. But it still seems a little tailored towards selected um, activities mm-hmm. and uses. And I, I, I like a search thing to be able to do the web as well. Mm-hmm. But um, let's see, what else? Uh, Safari updates? Yes. Ooh, pin tabs. I think that'll be exciting. I'm a big Safari user. I only use Safari. Um, so I think having a pin tab for something like, um, I don't know, Facebook and SoundCloud, which mm-hmm. I use, which I have open a lot of the time just for notifications and music. I think having just a little off in the corner and not using up all my tab space, then I can focus more on what I am working on and have my background things the background in the same window rather than behind it. So I have to click around and use shortcuts more. 
Yeah, Pintams are just great, just in general. Yeah, and that might work well into the new mute feature. So if I'm opening a YouTube video and I don't want to go pause the music, I can just have it mute the other tabs, and then I can watch the video and unmute and just go on as I would like normally. And well, speaking quicker. of which, there's a new feature for noisy tabs. It'll tell you which one's making noise, and you can mute it. Yeah, so, that's awesome. Yeah, I think, what does Chrome, you have that now? Um, So in Chrome, if a tab is making noise... You can see a little speaker icon uh, replace the favicon, I think. But I don't think there's an easy way to mute it, so that is a nice enhancement. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Um, let's see what else they, they added. Um, oh, actually, speaking of the pinned tabs, I thought it was funny that Craig pinned Pinterest to his pinned tabs. In Safari. Yeah. No one, no one seemed to really make a reference to that, but I hope at least a couple people chuckled. I'm sure somebody did. Um, all, otherwise, El Capitan has better performance overall. Um, they, they claim 1.4 times faster launching and twice as fast app switching. Um, yeah, we'll see about but, that. Yeah, the app switching, I don't know. That just sounds like animation speeds are tweaked. <laughs> but Or is that iOS 9? I don't know. Something's faster. Well, they said, they, have, they said that between metal and just other you know low-level improvements, things are faster. And I don't know how fast app switching can really be. I don't feel like it's particularly slow. Yeah. Yep. I think with with Metal, um, they're going to see great improvements in games and things. However, I'm worried because currently, you know, for games, I think a lot of engines use, you know, DirectX on Windows and then OpenGL for Linux and OS X. Yep. Now, if Linux is using OpenGL and OS X is using Metal or OpenGL, you know, to get good performance, you have to write it all again. Mm-hmm. Or use something that is bloated enough to support all three, and so I think we'll see the most benefits. You know, there'll be some games that support it, but I think a lot of them, these benefits might be in just smaller apps that have some graphical unique, component. Yeah, yeah, just you know, little animations or some blur effects on something mm-hmm. that might be really powerful. Well, um, considering I'm, the whole OS is you know just one big blur effect now, makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I think um, a, the Adobe Creative Suite being or a huge user of metal is going to be very powerful. And I'm excited to see that. Not that I use creative cloud, but to see other people enjoying using it. Mm -hmm, Definitely. So should we move to iOS then? Yeah. I think any other updates? I haven't looked at the Apple page yet. I should, but I know the notes app is redesigned as new features with more text editing, inline previews of links and images, um, check marks, matching the features in iOS nine. Um, Mail had some updates with full screen, whatnot. There's a new font. Yeah, Mail got like the updates that iOS 8 got uh, for Mail, and now that they brought it to 10.11. Yeah. Yeah, and the San Francisco font everywhere. I'm a fan of that. They didn't mention it, which I thought was subtle. Yeah, I, I like the font a lot, so it, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. But there's also a new Chinese font. Big news. Ooh. Ping okay. fl- Fang. Ping Fang. Ping okay. Fang. Well, yeah, I, I think Apple's really pushing to be a huge presence in China. And I think they've, I mean, we'll get to this in a minute, but with the transit features and maps, they had 300 cities in China and like 10 in the U.S. Mm-hmm. So iOS 9, speaking of which, they have transit and maps. Uh, you I know, think that's going to be... I think it's great. Um, we'll see when you know it gets to enough cities to matter. Did they say yeah, what think... cities they're launching in or did they just not mention it? They did mention, I don't have the screenshot near me at all, but I know New York was in there, Washington, D.C. Um, I think a lot of the big towns, mm-hmm. I don't know if Chicago is in there. They're probably one of the next ones to come in, though, yeah. I'd assume. Um, probably San Francisco is in there. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they are. Makes sense. I'd imagine the Twin Cities would be added in the sooner rather than later. Yeah, probably. But I'm sure they'll probably get more flushed out by fall, too, when it releases. Yeah. I'm I'm excited to use that. I think I don't use transit too much, but when I do, I really hate using whatever web. Oh, the web the they web, have. like so Metro using, Transit website is not great. Oh yeah, yeah. And so using an, a native app that I know how to use already that integrates the walking distance and everything as well. Yep, will be really nice and fun to use. Definitely. Maybe they'll ever maybe they'll bring it to Morris and do the Morris transit. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. Yeah, yeah. They don't even have routes, or barely. 
Another one of the big things is a news app. I'm excited about this. So I don't use news apps too often, but um, at school sometimes I'll go to like Google News when I'm eating some food in the morning. Um, I, I have used Flipboard in the past and whatever that other main competitor of Flipboard was. Um, various sites here and there I've used. So I have, I've kind of played with it, but I've never really been attached to something. But I like the Apple News app, partly because I will never be able to delete it from my phone, so it'll always be there nagging me to use it. But at the same time, it has multiple sources. Um, uh, speaking of nice touch was adding Daring Fireball there. I thought yeah, that was, good. that was fantastic. That was such John a great tweeted, call out. Like, I didn't know about this at all. Uh-huh. I think also um, with the new features in Swift and Xcode, um, they saw or they had in their back markdown comments in code, I think, mm-hmm. like that. Which I think, you know, go John Gruber. He made Markdown. Yeah, that that is pretty great. I mean, it is sort of like not only did he make it, he uh, made it good enough for people to actually like. Yeah. Um. So back with iOS nine, the news app. I think that'll be good. Um, they've released a tool to let developers add these fancy news articles to their sites and publications. Yep. Um, it appears the news app is not in iOS 9 beta 1. Hmm. Okay. That's a shame. They probably don't have enough content yet. Yeah. And I bet their demos today were just static and... Or, the, you know, it's proprietary build. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So I, I think it's interesting that they're using a special format to deliver this content. It's the Apple News format. And I think that's so, so amusing. Like, Is it... Like so, the, apparently the format isn't published yet. I guess maybe like, but it would be pretty funny if it was literally just an RSS feed with some extra fields in it. I'm yeah, I'm curious to see what this is. Yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting. I'm you know I'm sure as people break down iOS nine and especially later betas and news app is there. If them, anyone's going to make anything that feeds off of it, or because it might be a good data source too. Yeah, maybe. So they have some, like, uh, on the link I put in here for the notes, they have some info about what the advertising opportunities are like. Uh, they also detail uh, some of the, um, like, rules and guidelines and when it might be available and, you know, that kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah. Your standard. So doc. it also says here, if you don't have an RSS feed and you want to wait for Apple News format, there's nothing more more you have to do. We'll notify you as soon as the Apple News format is available. So it really could just be an automated news feed, RSS yeah. feed. Well, it has to be because everyone uses RSS already, so it makes it easier to get more content. But then and why call it something different? It's just the strangest thing. Maybe, you know, maybe the, because they're Apple. Yeah. They don't conform to open things, except for like Swift, but that's later. We'll see about that. Spoiler. <laughs> so uh, there's a new notes app. Yeah, that looks promising. I have a few concerns, but but you can add um, check marks for completing tasks. Um, you can paste in inline links that have nice previews, mm-hmm. um, images of, like some more text formatting. Not quite little buttons so you can like draw on it, and make a little chart or a graph. Yeah, yeah that, I, I like saw, that. I saw a tweet saying, you know, screenshot of the little paintbrush and eraser saying. This looks just like iPhoto for iOS, which is a very known failure. Um, yeah, I think it'll be good. I use I use Clear right now for my to-do list kind of thing. It, it seems like Apple kind of wants to compete with that, but they're not quite because you kind of have to make something and add it to a checkbox or you kind of have to construct the check spo- checkbox thing. Mm-hmm. And maybe you make just a note that's to-do. But it doesn't, you know, it's not an easy way of deleting. You have to check it, and you just like kind of delete the line. I'm not quite sure how to work, but well, so quite... I, I like on the picture that I'm looking at here on the iOS nine page, the the check marks are literally just little yellow check marks next to the bullet side. So yeah, it's pretty nice. Um, Google Keep, which is really similar to this, um, it, you know, it's Google's note taking app. It does the strikeout, but yeah, either way, I like checklists. Yeah, we'll see if I use it. I might. We'll see. Because I know the, the clear app that I have by Rumac Software, um, I have the Mac version, but I don't use it because for the life of me, I cannot get my clear to-dos to sync between my phone, iPad, and Mac. Hey, isn't that a feature of this new new thing? It's only this app that I've ever had iCloud issues with, at least that I can remember. Mm-hmm. Probably had more. Um, yeah, um, the new, let's see, the Mail app have new features. 
They usually always download something for Mail app. Um, I don't remember. Maybe, maybe not. They did for Mail for El Capitan. Not sure about iOS. Yeah, yeah I don't see anything specifically for okay. Mail, no. But uh, let's see. For Photos, they had a like a horizontal s- scroller thing, so you can scroll through photos really quickly. Yep. yep. Um, that's when we saw karaoke photos of Eddie Q. Yep. They always poke fun at Eddie. Yeah. Well, they were all in it. They all made fun of each other. Yeah, and then Phil Schiller was in there too. Wait, I want. What I want to know is, were those photos like uh, staged? Like, did they set those up, or did they actually karaoke last year? And and then they've got to be okay. fake. They cannot be real. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the, the, the lighting's too perfect. Okay. <laughs> but I just think it's it's funny that they're all on board with this. You know, it's just. A, a different view into the company than well, normally. It also makes you wonder, like, did they would they have wanted to do it if Steve would have let them? Yeah, that's true. And or or was it marketing who pushed for them to do this, or did they want to? Yes. Yeah, those are really good questions to ask. We'll never hear about. No, we'll hear about it in ten, fifteen years when someone leaves the company and yeah, maybe learn, you know says all about it. Um. Yeah, another feature of iOS 9 is the new Quick Type. Is that what it's called still? Um, yeah, the yes. new version that has cursor selections. Um, I think that's going to be really, really cool. It's like a very enhanced version of swipe selection, the jailbreak keyboard tweak and alt keyboard that has been around for a couple of years. So describe so how can, it works, yeah. Um, in Quick Type, you can now put, I think, is it just iPad? I, um, no, it, yeah, I think it's just iPad. Yeah, that's what they made it sound like anyway, yeah. So we're not quite there for iPhone, but you take two fingers, you just put it on the keyboard, and you can kind of move the cursor, and it, it doesn't attach it to a character. It just kind of floats it around and then drops down to the nearest character. Mm-hmm. And then you can, I'm not quite sure, I haven't looked it up, but it looks like you can double tap or something to select, and you can drag the cursor around, similar to if your two fingers were a mouse. Okay, it's just a single two-finger tap. I'm actually, I'm doing it right now. And uh, it works really well. I love it. And then you just land somewhere and then do a, a single two finger tap and then it selects that word. And then you just do a two finger drag after that. And then you can like select the like drag up or down whether you want to select or highlight text where you want it. Cool. I think that's going to be really nice for power users who use the iPad a lot. Also, they added things for if you have an external keyboard, you can do something that'll show all the keyboard shortcuts. Yeah, I don't know what the key was, but yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Because they showed like um, the. Alt tab view or the yep. command tab. Yeah, that was interesting. So it makes, it makes sense. Was the buttons you press to get that to come up? I couldn't tell. Well, probably. so it's probably the same. It's probably on your keyboard. It would probably be, you know, command tab. But I, I wonder what their cutoff is for what to show there. You know, rather than their standard multitasking, which is just like a recently used apps. Right. Like, so like actually the things that are running. Yeah, it'd probably be things that are actually running. And, you know, would they include, like, Facebook Messenger that has a VoIP that always runs in the background? Uh, Who knows? I don't know. I mean, so I don't know how iOS separates services and apps, so I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. There are different multitasking APIs they mm-hmm. can use. Um, there's, so there's an interesting one here. Passbook was renamed a wallet. What do you think of that? I think that was the plan all along, maybe? It sounds sort of, like Google Wallet. Yeah, I know. It's sort of weird. So there's but now Google Wallet is Android dead. Pay. <laughs> But okay, so it's not. Android Wallet is, or my gosh, Google Wallet isn't dead. Um, it is an implementation of Android Pay Okay. In, in the same way that a third party could also implement Android Pay for some reason in their own app. I okay. don't know. It's so dumb. I see. But no, I think Passbook was always a weird name. Yeah, I agree. Google Wallet is a lot better. Um, and it really, it tells the message much more clearly too. Mm-hmm. Um, so they added new things like store-based cards, so rewards cards and things that are automatically used if you um, use Apple Pay at a store location, um, as well as support for Discover, I think, in the next couple of months. Yeah, and they said they're also going to expand to uh, the UK, so that's always good. Yes. And they're going to have more launch partners there than they did in the US. 250,000. That's a lot. Good amount, yeah. Now, it, um, it, it, it is important to note that it's only the UK and not the entire EU, which is interesting also. I wonder what their timetable for that is. Also, what would their timetable, if they ever did it for China, I mean, uh, doing doing uh, something like Apple Pay in China might even be harder. Yeah. 
well, it's such a huge country. Right. And I'm kind of surprised they haven't done like Canada or something too. Yep. Um, another thing they did is, uh, at least on iPad, uh, picture in picture for video. So if you're playing a video, you can kind of escape it and go to another app and just keep the video playing. I think that is an amazing feature. Yeah, I agree. It's been a Joe Berg tweak. Ryan uh, Petrich made a tweak uh, called, I think, Video Pain or something a year or two ago. I think iOS 7 that had that did this. And so it's cool to see it be implemented in stock iOS. So do we know any limitations of that particular feature yet? I think, um, well, it works on an iPad Mini 2. That's all I can share. <laughs> so... I would be surprised if it's on I- on iPhone. Well, yeah, that makes sense. But I was wondering, so like YouTube has been playing with this idea of like, if you're a subscriber, you will be able to send your video to the background and yet still have it run. And I feel like, uh, you know, Google would be somewhat angry if that was possible on iOS and you could just circumvent it. So, you know, it would, the video would still be playing, but you could go do other things. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious. I mean... Maybe they, well... I wonder I, if it's something an app can say, no, you can't do it. Yeah. I want to say no, because, I mean, well, yeah, that's a good point. Because for ads, it could be harmful for revenue. I mean, I don't know how it could be harmful. I don't see a reason why you you wouldn't... If, if you play it and then put it to the side and don't look at it, then mute it. You know, Then you're watching the ad, but you're not actually... Yeah, I know. I that that's that's the problem. That's why I was wondering. Yeah. All right, but I mean, I'm like a a laptop or desktop. I mean, you can always just you know click on another tab and I'll look at the video and mute it. R- right. Yeah. That's what half people nowadays do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, another thing I liked was app thinning. So, from what it sounds like, is someone tweeted. Um, let me find it here. That um, apps that you upload are now, in fact. LLVM bitcode that are optimized for a specific device. So I'm not sure how this works. I haven't looked at the docs whatsoever, but um, potentially, and you know, they, uh, they mentioned in the keynote that you will only download the app for the assets that you're going to use. So, you know, it for, cause Facebook doesn't yet support arm 64 in their app because their binary, I think is 50 some megabytes. Yeah. So now you can put, arm v7 and arm 64 in your app and it's only going to be downloaded on the device that supports the the latest and greatest and so app installs will be smaller i'm assuming also you know if you are on well i guess there's no non-retina display devices that'll support ios 9 now but um great really but i guess well like ipad or iphone 6 plus you won't use the 2x graphics if there are 3x graphics supplied yep that makes sense the non-iphone 6 plus versions won't have 3x graphics included in their binaries which they have until ios 9 comes out so that's exciting i know there's been lots of complaint about that for a couple of years now Mm -hmm. and speaking of devices so it's um ipad mini 2 and above um and ipad air and above so they're really cutting off the ipads a lot which is really good because they're still selling the iPad mini with an A5 right now, which is... And that, uh, like, abysmal amount of memory, too. Yeah, I think that, that has half a gig of RAM. Yep. And they were saying the the um, multiple app view, which you can do in iOS now on iPad, is only in the iPad Air 2, probably because CPU and then I'm assuming the next iPad's going to have two gigs of RAM, and yep. I think that's really going to be helpful. Mm-hmm, definitely. Or required almost. Yeah. Right. iPad Air, two, iPad Air is two gigs. Of, iPad Air two is two gigs of RAM. Oh, it does. That's okay. probably why. It, that's, that's probably why, why it was yeah. limited. Okay. Yep. And yeah. uh, it's a little bit confusing because some of the multitasking thing does work on the other devices, like um, the uh, slide over. Like you can slide over. Um, you know, like it, t- it takes up like the right quarter of the screen or the right third of the screen. You can pull up like Twitter or messages or something, and you can interact with that but you can't slide it over to like 50% um, unless you're on iPad Air 2. And you can only have like, so like on devices that aren't iPad Air 2, then you can have both uh, windows open, both apps open, but only one will be interactable at a time. And the other one kind of goes slightly gray and then um, is like uninteractable. So like one goes into like a sleep state, but it's still visible. So you can still like read from it. Okay. Interesting. But then. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. That's a good way to get around the memory, I guess. Just yeah. sleep it, compress the memory. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I think it looked like when those just slide in, if it's not the full half half, it's you know when run one is running at the iPhone version and one's running at the iPad version. I'm assuming for the most part the iPhone versions use a bit me- less memory than the full iPad versions, and so that might play into it. Yep, that's uh, what I was assuming as well. Yeah. yeah, makes a lot of sense. I think those are like two of the most important features here. Uh, you know, there there wasn't that much like really fancy big sh- eye catching things, but I think slide over and split view for iPad were really big. It seems like a lot of these features are targeted at iPad. So the quick type, the slide over, split view, they're really. Uh, it almost makes you think there's going to be an iPad Pro later. Or yeah, something. that's exactly what I was thinking. You might yeah. maybe come around the time that iOS 9 comes out. Like, oh, here, look, everyone, there's an iPad Pro just in time for these new features. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, or or what if they replace the MacBook Air with an iPad that runs, or, you know, with an iOS-based MacBook Air? But why? They already ruined the MacBook Air with the MacBook One. But it would be an even lighter, you know... So it would be even more what's, ruined. What's lighter than a, the MacBook One? A MacBook that runs iOS... Yeah, okay, sure. I mean, I don't know. Built in keyboard might be nice. I don't, I don't know, know what they do that track. Who knows? Um, they did some minor CarPlay things that support um, Retina high DPI screens, f- different resolutions, and wireless connectivity now. Um, anything else about iOS? Um, with CarPlay, um, it, um, it'll also like activate without a cutting without having to plug it in. So as soon as you get into your car and sit down, leaving the phone in your pocket, it will yeah, automatically. Yeah. How does it detect you in the car? I guess when you're in proximity of the other radio in there. Yep. That yeah. seems super cool. It makes me wish I had a cool car that could do stuff like that. Yeah. All right. Apple watch. Yes. Watch OS. Wait, wait. I have one more thing about iOS nine. Okay. The settings app. You can now search for settings. There's a search thing at the top. Cause there's only a million settings, you know, Exactly. Oh, and um, they brought um, ultra low power mode to iOS. Right. Oh, right. Yeah. So you can get three hours in your during your last traditional hour. Yeah. I wonder what they disable there. So I, I put a put a link to a picture that describes what the pop up says. Low power mode conserves power by limiting net, network activity and performance. Mail is only fetched manually. Background app refresh and downloads are disabled. Motion and brightness are reduced, and networking speed may be reduced. There's probably more things that it does, but I'm guessing that's, you know, a little bit. Sounds, sounds like they, you know, um, disable a lot of push-based services, probably don't use LTE. Yep. Um, Although that's kind of strange because LTE is probably more power conservative now than 3G would be. Yeah, that's, yeah, I'm curious. They might just They might just space out when the phone allows apps to call out. Yeah, that's true. But they, you know, they probably clock the CPU down. Yep, and... throttle. Yep. Or, or only only use data that's like absolutely necessary. Like right. it's like a, an app notification only do like messages or yep. maybe emails. I don't know. Yeah. Priority. Yeah. I think that's a really great thing. You know, extra battery life is always good. Yeah. Um, now, oh, and they also said just overall through all the refinements in iOS nine, you can get up to an hour more battery life in your standard use on that's good. iPhone. Or I don't probably iPhone, not iPad, iPad, but yeah, I think they said that one was for uh, iPhone. Yeah. All right, Watch OS and their interesting spelling, lowercase and then uppercase. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. These people are crazy. I guess <laughs> if you look at the previous operating systems, though, iOS is you know it's a lowercase. It's just operating system is an acronym, so it's going to be uppercase. And the ten in OS ten is Roman numeral, which is by standard uppercase. So they're just following their lowercase operating system. Titles. But but it's I don't care. It's not okay. <laughs> but yes, watchOS two is going to have a native SDK. Um, so developers can add the um, complication into their app. So on their main watch face, you know, in the place of your activity wheel or the weather or calendar events, other apps can support features in there. So they use the example of a VW electric car battery meter i guess um i don't know if they had other examples i don't remember but um you can do things more things on it as well so like load videos they showed an example of a vine glance that loaded the vine app loading a video um so apps you know load faster because the logic and more binaries are stored on the watch itself so they load faster i think apple definitely knew this was coming Mm -hmm. i mean they of course did but and designed for it with the 
putting eight gigabytes of memory on the Apple Watch. Because mm-hmm. right now, I doubt I'm using like even one or two on my Apple Watch. So when you download, like, you know, you download some app, like, let's say you're downloading Clear, you know, you download it to your iPhone and then it has an Apple Watch component. How does it get to the watch now? It just downloads, I think it downloads to your phone. Once that's installed, it then sends it over to the Apple Watch so, just automatically. So it's kind of weird that the, the native apps still have to go through the phone to get to be native on the watch, even mm-hmm. though they're not using the phone anymore through that weird tethering thing. Yeah, but like I think it's it's I a mean, necessary it thing. Because, that, like, like, the watch doesn't have any other way to get like the watch doesn't have Wi Fi or anything, right, does yeah. it? Yeah. Well no it the watch does have Wi Fi, but it'll only connect to a network you previously connected to through iCloud, iCloud keychain, I'm assuming. Um so it's limited functionality. Mm-hmm. And so if you want to use it an app not at your home or work or something where you have Wi Fi, you need, kinda need your phone to tether it through. But then also so Say you want to use an account that you have to log into. You're not can't really log into something on just your Apple Watch. So you kind of that need an iPhone app to work together. And so maybe the apps that are mainly focused on an Apple Watch app are going to be much lighter on the iPhone now. But uh, we'll, see. we'll see. I mean, because you're still. I mean, it's really weird because uh, now you're going to end up having to download two binaries sort of every time there's an update. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Good thing there's app thinning. The same with app thinning. <laughs> yeah. So. Good thing. Um, so new features also, they have new watch faces. They focus around photography, so time-lapse of some global locations that looked pretty nice. I think they look really nice, I guess, and they match the time of the day because they recorded a 24-hour one, which seems really cool, but I don't know if I'll use it just because it's flashy, uses more power, and it doesn't show as much as the modular face, which is what I use. And mm-hmm. same with photo albums that are person- or just photos that you can also add. I wonder if nice that's going to be hard on the battery life. Just just running this little video in the background all the time the screen's on. I have yeah. To imagine it would. yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Um, let's see. You talked about complication, uh, the new complications feature on the Apple Watch. And um, with that, it also works with a feature uh, called time travel. So then uh, yeah. when you roll the crown forward, it, all the complications will update to like a in one hour ahead of time or two hours ahead of time. So you can check to see like what's going to be happening, like what the temperature is going to be in a couple hours, or what uh, is on your calendar, or whatever other third-party complications you have are going to be doing in a couple hours. Yeah, yeah and it's it, pretty cool. I mean, it looks like you can be really specific too. You can just do a few minutes, which might be good for weather. Um, I think it's be interesting to see. You know, some apps are obviously really great for this, but others are going to be weird to support like activity. You're not going to like. Oh, it's guessing at your activity in the future. Well, yeah, so they um, they made a joke in the in the keynote, like, yeah, we haven't figured out what to do here for stocks yet. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. A, yeah, that's a I missed that one. That's a very good way of putting it. Yeah. Yep. Um, let's see what else. Another joke with that is it said uh it didn't he didn't say this but it said on the uh, slide um, a little asterisk by time travel and then it said flux capacitor is sold separately. <laughs> Wonderful. That's good. I think add, adding complication support for native apps is like if if they didn't do that this, with this SDK, they would have messed up hardcore. I think it was something pretty much everyone saw coming, and I'm really glad they went ahead and did it. Because like I I immediately got, when I got my Apple Watch, I you know some native apps supported this, and I'm like, I wish this app was here or mm-hmm. something like that. Definitely. And I'm, I'm I want my weather app to be my third party <laughs> weather app, not the Apple one, for example. So other things with uh, WatchOS looks like they allowed um, the native apps and um, to get a lot more control over the hardware on the Apple Watch. Like it can now use this, the speaker and microphone and accelerometer and other bits of hardware that it couldn't before. The Tepic engine and even the the uh, digital crown for things that aren't, I guess, for scrolling. So And the heart rate sensor, apparently. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think it'll be really interesting to see what people do with this. And also other third-party exercise or fitness apps can also now put data into HealthKit, which feeds into activity or however they do it now. Yep. Hopefully they don't have a, an internal activity kit. Hopefully activity it's all kit. HealthKit. Yeah. I think it is, but who knows? So, yeah. Um, also a nightstand mode, so you can... I, I'm just now imagining... So they announced nightstand mode, which is where you have your watch sitting on the side, looking like you kind of wrapped the band in, and you have the watch in the charger that's horizontal and then you're so the digital crown and the friend button 
whatever that button yeah. is called, the button yep. facing up. And so, you know, the button is your off button and the digital crown is your sleep. So you, when you set an alarm, it seems like a really cool idea. Um, I'm, I haven't used my Apple watch as an alarm, so I don't know how loud it goes, um, yeah. but it seemed nice and gentle. But now I just see all of these uh, Apple watch stand manufacturers just face palming and, Oh no, no, I have to look at <laughs> product. And they're okay they with that. They can make a new product and they can make people buy it again. That's true. Now maybe I will hold off until new ones start coming out. Yeah. Might, might be a good. Idea. Well, I mean, it's only if you care. I mean, if you don't intend to use your watch as a nightstand peripheral, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, if you're going to use it charging at your desk instead, maybe that's better. Still eyeing that Nomad $70 dock. <sighs> yeah. So nice. Oh, anyway. So that's WatchOS. Hopefully it doesn't impact better life too much. But even if it does, it lasts so much longer in the day for me than I don't really mind. Like, my my watch is at 66% battery right now, and I took it off the charger at 6 a.m. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's awesome to hear. I mean, I have the 42 millimeter, so the 38 is probably a little less, but it lasts way longer than I need it to. So I'm, I'm okay if it goes down to 30 in a more heavy or even moderate day. So I think I think they I think they definitely designed the hardware in here with the watch OS two and the SDA, SDK in mind. Yep. I think it seemed like everyone was really surprised by how good the battery was when it came out. At least that's what I gathered. Maybe it was just me, but I think a lot of people said the same thing. Like the first day it was kinda hard, you know, like it might not get you through. The second day is kind of the same. And then after a few days when you stopped playing with it constantly, then it seemed good. Yeah. I, I got my watch in the evening. I came home from school and I put my watch maybe 8 or 9 p.m. And so I didn't use it much. The fr- I used a bunch that evening. And then like the first full day, I, I used it a bit, but not a ton. And so it, I kind of jumped in and never had that first day, oh, crap feel. Yep. I have I slept with it overnight. Like I fell asleep before taking it off once. And I just kept it on at war the second day. And it was still at maybe like 18% when I went to bed that second night. And so I never got it got a chance to test power reserve or have it die and see how that affects me. Mm -hmm. So when the Apple watch OS two comes out this fall, how does the user update their watch to watch OS? Oh man, that is such a good question. Well, assuming it works the same way as uh, the watch OS 1.0.1 update, um, there'll be a notification and the Apple watch app, um, will have a, uh, if you go there general, there's a software update tab, which will list watch OS two, um, for 1.0.1, you had to put the watch in the charger, and it had to be 50% battery or higher. Um, so unlike iOS, where you can update when it's not charged, it had to be in the charger. Um, and it took it took a little longer. It took maybe 20 or 30 minutes to download, after it downloaded to the phone, to just send it to the watch and update and install it. It took quite a while. Yeah, it's uh, Bluetooth, think, you know? I think Yeah, I think it was the bandwidth and probably the CPU on here. Yep. Makes but sense. I was stubborn and, of course, put the charger on under my watch while it was on my wrist. Of course you did. With the band a little too tight. I tweeted a photo about it a while ago. But So, that was WWC. Except for, what, what, one more thing. One more thing? <laughs> that never that? happens. So, Apple Music. It really beats music rebranded. Which so- showed so well. For when they did, how do you get started? You know, you go and you see what genres you like. I I tried out the Beats Music app just a week ago, just to try it out, and it's the exact same screen with a different styling on it, basically, where you select um, artists that you make the circle bigger if you really like them, uh, moderate size if you're okay, and you shrink them out to nothing if you don't like them. And so that's it's totally Beats Music just rebranded, which I think if this looks like a very promising product, and especially with Jimmy Ivan on and probably support from labels and the music industry as a whole. I think it has potential, especially with an Android app. Yeah. It I has would, an Android app. That's very unusual. I actually, I typed up a draft tweet right when they started announcing and I was thinking about this and I'm like, you know, it's not going to be, it, it will not be a success if there's no Android app. Well, you know, it's and, just like the, uh, you know, the old days, you know, of Windows and Mac, you know, if there was no Windows version of iTunes, it wouldn't mm-hmm. have been nearly as successful. Exactly. And so, you know, I'm like, okay, wait, I'll, I'll listen to this app. We'll see if there's an Android bird. And then, then there was, and I was, I was happy to leave the tweet and made a new one. But I think, um, it looks like a very promising, I think B, B1, Beats 1 radio looks kind of cool. 
I we'll don't know. see how much it gets used. Yeah. I don't know. It's a radio station. There's tons of online radio. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hesitant. But it, but it has a huge name behind it. So hey, I think... hey, hey, by the way, algorithms, they're evil. Gosh, that guy. So, I was confused about that. Like, he talked about, you know, algorithms, they're not as good as humans. And then he said with Apple Music, they're going to have humans selecting like playlists and what song comes next yep. and songs for you. So does that mean like when you're listening to Apple music, they have hired humans that are going to be uh, picking which song comes next when you're listening to Apple music. I was under the impression that, well, okay. So I was under the impression the when you was the new data centers is actually a people phone. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> That's no wonder they need so much air conditioning. So I was, I was under the impression that when he was talking about that, he literally meant the radio, like the people on the radio were literally picking the songs. Yeah. And oh. it like uh, I I don't know I don't know I guess I did was when they started doing this music thing that's not the one more thing I was looking for and I kind of tuned out. I get I it tuned to, out. <laughs> I listen to a lot. I listen to maybe five or six hours of music a day. So I'm I'm a huge listener and I I have Spotify Premium right now. I pay the student discount five dollars a month and I use it mostly for offline version of a different mix of songs for I one of the student discount for Spotify Premium. What? I didn't know there was a student discount for Spotify Premium. Yeah, five dollars a month. That sounds oh, really geez. good. Man, I should have been on that because I'm also a Spotify Premium member. Go for it. Um, and so it's nice for that and sharing. Um, I've DJed a few dances at Morris, and so it was good for that and collaborating. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if Apple Music will have that, but I think it, it sounds like it, it mixes well with your iTunes library. There was a, a message somewhere where it sounds like you can add apple music songs into your library and so integrate it with your own playlists and so that really pulls the non-playlist based portion that is really successful in spotify where you can play anything you want at any time Mm -hmm. and i think if that's a feature ten dollars a month is okay for me um because then i think i will only use itunes rather than a weird sometimes use itunes sometimes use spotify Mm -hmm. kind of thing and then i can still integrate i listen to a lot of music on soundcloud and download stuff that just is not in spotify or itunes just weird remixes by who know you know little few, small guys all over the world and so being able to integrate all that together as well as larger songs from the iTunes store I think will be a really nice way to mix it together and then it you know it's all in one app that I already use on my phone I can delete a few others and then if I can target single songs that I don't own but I can stream for you know oh I just want to play this one song with this one person I don't know but someone I have a friend who wants to hear it like I can do that and that's that's good for me. And that's kind of how I think I'll use it. Mm -hmm. Well, and the pricing seems to be, you know, you know, on par with other music services. Yeah. So it's $10 for one person, or uh, I guess some somewhat different than other services. It's $15 for a family slash group of six. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious if anyone in my family will be on board for that or, or friends that are like family to me. I mean, 15 (laughs) bucks isn't much divided by six people yeah, yeah oh, that's, that, that's super cheap and then you can all listen at the same time too yeah i like so, i like um, the comment saying you know some of you share one itunes account which we don't like yeah is that i i have many i have many friends or family that that do that because you know way back when like cousins of mine were you know late elementary school the parents didn't want them to have their own accounts so right. they just all shared well and, and especially then got iphones and then it's a huge cluster and right i mean why would you want to buy the same apps and the same music eight times like that doesn't make sense yeah and so family sharing for the app store and then for itunes music or yeah. apple ooh, apple music oops i think it'll be a, a a good way of doing it and the 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 interfaces in the way of like you can discover recently added songs or new ones to the itunes store i think that's a good way of doing it too hey and they brought ping back yeah they talked about that a lot. Can we call it like music, Apple Music Connect? Yep, Connect. Yeah. And I, when, he, when he said it, it's like, I hope it, there isn't a K for the C. Uh, <laughs> that would be bad. The, I don't really care too much about what the artists post. I mean, maybe if I'm a huge fan of them, I'll like to see that. But for the most part, I just want to be notified when they release new stuff. Yeah. And that's what I like about Spotify. Because it basically just alerts you when something's added to a playlist you follow or an artist you follow uploads and releases new content. Yeah, same with me. I kind of tuned out during the connect part. 
Yeah. I, I remember I remember I actually used Ping for a while. I had like four or five friends who were also using Ping. I think I signed up and then left immediately because I had to have iTunes open. Yeah. yeah. It was kind of cool to see what others were listening to and what whatever, but you know, no one really used iTunes and bought music a no, lot. No. A few people did, but for the most part no one did. And so that was lacking. But also with with Ping, I did share stuff. I've seen on TimeHop old tweets that I post from four years ago saying, I liked this song on I, on Ping. And I think that was kind of cool. You know, it's showing what you're listening to, supporting Apple <laughs> and sure. the artist. So, so yeah, what you, I think what, it's promising. I'll, I'll definitely like also a three-month beta or a trial, which yeah. I think is, I think that's very powerful because you know, it only needs one, one month, but three months, that's... One month you can try something and not, but for three months you might put the effort in to more make it part of your your work. Mm-hmm. work and, then, and it feels like you can actually try investing in it because it's long enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And Apple has the money to be able to afford that. <laughs> yep, yeah. they do. And, I, I'm, and I'm sure the power users, you know, the, the people who are like really gun ho about it, they'll just buy it immediately or, you know, just buy it and even not use it yeah so did they say when that that's actually starting so it's starting June next 30th. month okay this month i will i will get it on day one and i will cancel my well maybe i won't cancel spotify right away but yeah we'll try it out at least wait till the three month trial is out there yeah yeah i'm excited i think it'll be good so compared to other keynotes you've experienced in the past like 2014's keynote for example how was this was this good um, it's not as memorable as last year's because last year they, they slammed on Swift, a whole new language. Yep. They added extensions. They just like opened up something that was new and the new, a new Apple in terms of transparency and features and listening to people, I think. I mean, even last like last year, year they did that, the, the new keyboards, I think, right? Mm-hmm. I mean that, that alone, I never would have expected to see custom keyboards on iOS. Yeah, I think. And just. Plain old share and app extensions, yep. which I use too. I think last year's was memorable. However, this year, I think if Apple Music is very successful, I think this would be a notable one. Um, I don't think the iOS or OS ten ones are particularly noteworthy, but you need some of that because you need to have stability. And I think this is going to be a good release. It adds a few features, but it's not, you know, it's going to be, I hope these operating systems are going to be known for their solid stability and that would be a nice change you know i waited six months for uh what's the current one called yosemite yeah, to stabilize just got that a couple weeks ago yeah i just got it a couple weeks ago six months later here i am i mean that's a long time yeah shouldn't have to do that every year well you can just do the public betas and <laughs> i can i can contribute system. to improving the stability of the system i don't know Hey, if you're on the Yosemite public beta, you get MDNS responder back. Um, that doesn't help me. I suppose. But, yeah, like the stability performances are all super huge, very important, but just not very exciting in a keynote. You no. Know, you're yeah. not gonna go, Guess what? You know, the operating setting's 20% more stable now. It's, it's just not something that you're going to go tell them about. It's not exciting. Well, on the other I hand, wish- since the, everybody there is a developer, I'm sure they've all had their share of crashes and problems. Maybe people would applaud that. I think they should have mentioned Discovery D, just one tiny little thing. Uh, <laughs> but you know, we'll yeah. see. Maybe in, maybe in one of the talks. Yeah. You know. Um, a couple. I'm just going through some tweets here. Um, someone, I think it was Jimmy Irvine, said, "quote That's why we're at Apple, you know, and why they're doing it." And then this person, Zach Kaufman, said, "Well, I would have thought it was the three billion dollar acquisition." Ooh. <laughs> um, also, Swift is now version two point it's also open source and will release the core frameworks for iOS, OS X, and Linux. Yep, compiler and runtime for the Linux. Oh my gosh, it's going to be great. That's going to be something. And Windows coming in 10 years. Wonderful. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see. Um, they also updated uh, Sprite Kit and Scene Kit tools for Swift and uh, Gameplay Kit. Uh, gameplay kit. I was just learning how to use in Unity. Cool. And then some other game features with Swift. You know, play cool. around with, with Swift and games again? Yeah, I'm absolutely going to, yeah. Cool. Let's try out your apps. Um, let's see, Erica Sedan said, more Swift, less Taylor. 
Nice. They're demoing all the Very music nice. people. Um, another notable thing is you no, you no longer need to pay for a developer membership to run apps from Xcode on a physical device. So previously, you had to be a developer to install a certificate or something on a device and register that device with your developer account in order to just try out an app you're building. Right. So now, if you're building your own, you can send it to your device and load it there without being a, a registered developer. That's kind of ridiculous. Oh I can't I believe also- that change wasn't like figured out like six years ago. That is a terrible restriction. Yeah. So that's well, that restriction is because of piracy. Because now anyone can install. They can because of this that just happened. Now you can without a jailbroken iPhone, you, you can install pirated apps now or cracked apps. Well, no, not cracked apps, but. You probably have to cert- write a certificate, or there's, I don't know how it handles it. There's probably a certificate matching thing. I don't know if it's, yeah, I don't know if it's, I don't know the details. Maybe it's sure be- a, a third party program like iModSign and iResign, things that already exist, where you take a cracked app and it would use your developer certificate. So those, these apps already exist, and now they just won't even need a developer certificate. Well, I mean, they still code sign it, whatever. So they'll, they'll still have security protections. I don't know how they implement it, but. Um, another thing is OS 10, uh, El Capito will be the last version to support Apple's Java six, <laughs> which is the worst. I, there are apps where I install the Java eight JDK and an app still bugs me for Apple's Java six because yep. developers just link against that. Cause it's can be, uh, this like performance things that Java eight and seven can help with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Closures. Um, Spotify CEO, made a tweet saying, oh, okay. Yeah, that was funny. Um, yep, San Francisco on OS X and iOS as well. Um, oh, there's a third-party quick reply API in the release notes for from a notification. So non, you know, apps that aren't just Apple's messages can now have quick reply. That's good. There's a new notification center widget for batteries, so you can see your Apple Watch or your iPhone's battery in Notification Center. Um <laughs> like your iPad and MacBook's battery life? I'm not sure. The screenshot only had a watch and a phone and the local device, but I'm not sure. I'd be pretty um, impressed also, if it synced up your MacBook. Yeah. Oh, um, another feature that they didn't mention, but I noticed there's, there's now an iCloud Drive app in iOS 9. Hmm. Yes. That was that was rumored to happen. I, I, might, I might use... Well, I don't know. I'm probably still going to use Dropbox unless it's a huge file, but we'll see. Yeah, because I do pay for 200 gigabytes in iCloud, so maybe I'll use that more. Um, there are now six-digit passcodes, which up to a million possible combinations rather than 10,000. So that's going to help with security and annoyance. But most things are, you know, the newer models now have Touch ID. So yep. Makes a lot of sense. Why not do it? Yeah. doesn't hurt anyone. Of course, yeah. you know, everybody, when they have to go and update it, they're just going to do, like, two more extra same digits. Yeah, but for brute force, it'll be easier. Yeah. Or harder. Um, Marginally. The, the iPhone 4S will still support iOS 9. That's pretty impressive. Yep. So, yeah, it'll be the longest running device supported, I think. Hmm. Hopefully it go, goes away next year. Um, one small change I noticed in iOS 9, on the notification uh, panel, the panel that you drag, drag down from the top, you know, how there's like a today view and then there's like a notifications view. Um, and iOS 9, then I'll show both of those at the same time with the today view pushed to the left and the notifications pushed to the right. Oh, finally. Cool. Because notifications is what you, I use way more than today view. I mean, today view occasionally, but yeah, cool. Um, ooh, new beach ball. Really? So beach ball? Ladder design. Yeah, I, huh. I tweeted about it an hour ago. Um, it's a flatter design. I haven't seen it animate, but if it does animate. But yeah, that beach ball has been around for a long time. Forever, yeah. yeah. They need to pull a Microsoft and redesign the mouse. Eh. All of Retina kind of counts. But yeah, that that kind of that covers all the tweets I've seen. I still have three hundred thirty to go. I'm still what five hours back, I think. But just jump to the top. You can do it. Yeah, but this is the day where you have to see all the comments because okay. there's so much stuff out there. You know, it's funny that whoever took the picture of this beach ball was, like, reading some really messed up text. <laughs> Maybe that's why it froze. I think it might be. It, isn't that, that 
weird glyph thing that it's been going around on oh, messages. Yeah, I don't know actually. Here, I'll I'll put well, a. That, that was just cor- the core text in the notification handling. So I don't know. There you go. Uh, I think I think uh, San Francisco is going to be a nice touch. I'm I'm excited for that. And it looks like they're, it's a little different font than what's on plain old watch kit. So they've adjusted it. So it looks, it looks a little more Helvetica, like a little less rounded, at least from what I've seen of it. I don't know. I think it'll be a good, a good change that modernizes it. Although I'll miss Helvetica. I mean, you can, you can still see it somewhere, maybe someday. Yeah. Oh, the, um, health app now has reproductive health in the, Health app, which has been Apple was really scrutinized for last year when they added a ton of health things, but nothing about reproductive health. Mm-hmm. So I think that's a very good addition. Yeah. Oh, um, cloud, the CloudKit Web API now supports running web services. So there's been a little hype about running. You know, I saw one tweet saying, "Oh, I'm gonna leave Node.js for iCloud.js now." I don't know about that. <laughs> so we'll see. Yeah, iCloud Web Services is a thing. Keep in mind. Any other comments or thoughts on? Uh, I think it was a pretty good, pretty good day. Yeah, I thought it was a good, solid presentation. Yeah, excited for what's to come. Yep, really makes me want to order an iPad Air two to try out the other multitasking features. Just wait until the the new ones come out. iPad yeah, Pro. Yeah. yeah, I'll try to be patient. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can just snap two full screen windows on your computer instead. It's about the same. I saw a, a laptop today that was it's an Asus thing that ran Windows 8.1. It had you know your laptop with your screen in here, but yeah. it closed, and on the top side of the laptop was a full touch screen. That doesn't why that doesn't make any it, sense. So it had two screens back yes. to back. That's so dumb. yes, and the outer one being a touch screen. It was it's strange to look. I don't know. It it's kind of cool. I kind of like those things on Windows. The touchscreen is nice here and there, but it's just awkward as weight and expensive and well, out in the open to break. I you know, know, what's funny is, so, like, I'll, I'll, I want to show somebody something, like my parents, and I, I bring the MacBook Air over to them, and I show them. Like, I, you know, I turn the MacBook Air around and show them. And they'll try to touch it. And they'll try to touch the screen, and I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. And it happens all the time. Yeah. I mean, screens that are not physically heavy apparently must be touchable i guess i don't know yeah i wonder if there are gonna be more macbook ones that come in with broken screens because someone tried to touch it <laughs> by accident yeah. the screen's not responsive i'm gonna touch it harder exactly. it's gonna happen well uh this has been a pretty good uh special here um where can we find you on the internet uh you can find me on twitter at bman 479 or tech 479 or you can stop on my website at brianm.me not very active though but yeah going through that update you know it's it's still a a default page it's i've been working on gulp in the back end thing still i'll get there what about you snuffy where can we find you um i don't know you can email me at matt sasa at me.com sweet and of course you can find me just about everywhere especially on the twitter ryan amar and of course on google plus but i'm not going to be really doing anything because i'm on jury duty this week so uh, just look for me next week sounds good yeah well it's been good thanks for uh, coming on and doing the special it's been good yeah well have a good one 